Okay, I'm back at it. Got a bunch of pieces already pre-cut uh, that I can weld in here to finish this little corral. And then I'm first thing I'm gonna do is finish the grid down there. I gotta butt weld and splice uh, the rest of those little rods in. And I am gonna change out to a new tip because it I pretty much cooked that tip yesterday. It's all like bent and um, yeah. So we're almost out of welding wire. I was kind of just tacking things together yesterday, uh, but I do got a little spool. We should be able to finish the job with what we got here. So I'm gonna get right on it so I can get this thing finished up. Okay, this is where we're at. We pretty much got this little uh, corral dialed in. Now I have this piece here. I'm gonna weld in the back down here, about right about there. And then another piece here, that'll stop these from kicking that way, and then it'll stop those from kicking in this way. And then I'm gonna weld uh, two pieces, one there, one there, or another third piece right there, and then that's done. We're gonna cap this and make things to slide in here. Same for right here. Now, what happened here is we had some more of this rod, but we didn't have enough to make it long. So we decided to uh, just go as far as the shortest one we had. And we're gonna make another thing that drops in here. And I'm gonna make a little ca cage down there so uh, it doesn't kick out. And then I think if we have enough stuff, I'm gonna run one more of these down at the bottom so nothing kicks out that way. And I think we're good. We're gonna fill this thing right up. Now I put these on here for two reasons. One, it'll help the stuff uh, from kicking out. And two, it's gonna support these. These things are super strong now. And as you can see, this is what we're gonna be doing here. Put this stuff in there. You'll be able to just, you know, throw it in there or whatnot. I might actually run something all the way across now that I'm thinking about it. But the V had to be there for uh, support. And I didn't wanna put a bar uh, all the way that high because you don't want to have to pick the stuff up really high to get it out, you know? Anyway, uh, over here, it's pretty much all welded in. Got the cage, except for that one in the back's really bothering me, but there ain't nothing I could do, and it really doesn't matter. Now, looking down there, they look smaller than up here. It's because we're looking at this on an angle this way, but when you look down there, they're smaller because even though that's four inches uh, wide, it's tilted, so it's actually narrower. So it's probably like three inches or three and a half inch down there. But that grid corresponds with this. And then we just have to figure out how we're gonna mount these aluminum things.
Okay, this is where we're at. I ran out of welding wire. So I knew I was kind of pushing the limits of uh, those little spools. I thought I could get away with a day's worth of welding, but I was laying down some bead today. So I got the framework in the bottom pretty much tacked in. These horizontal bars need to be uh, burned in a little bit more, but pretty much everything down here is ready to go and I need to weld this piece up in here. And then I made these. And what, what I'm gonna do is, um, these are the same length. I'm gonna leave that like that. It's gonna slide in that rod. I'm gonna cut that off. And I have these short pieces that I'm gonna weld on there. So you'll just basically slide this up. And push that out of the way like that. Get your piece or put your piece in. Bring this back over, slide it up, drop it. Then you're secure. Now this one here is gonna be the same. We're gonna utilize the post to do the out, outer ones and then I drill holes here. What I'm gonna do is I have a pipe somewhere. I'm gonna weld this pipe up in here like that. So that's down in a solid uh, thing, not just wiggling around like that. So unfortunately I had to break out the big welder. So it's gonna be um, fun because I've never actually welded thin material with that welder. So gonna be a learning curve but a few more things and this thing is ready for paint oh and Steve cut me more caps we're gonna cap all of these just so it kind of finishes off I think it would look unfinished and I was gonna if I didn't run out of welding wire weld all the way around we'll see how this welder works I was getting some splatter last time I used it now that welding wire that's in this thing has been in it since I bought it, and that's gotta be five years ago. And it sat in storage for three years. Steve thinks I got rust on the wire, and then he said that rust explodes, you know, when you weld. This thing used to lay down beautiful beads. Now, I will say this. The welding wire that was in here before I had a big spool in there, flux core, that wire was probably in there a good three or four years. And the wire that I put in here today, it was like a night and day difference. Now I did change the tip, but the welding I did today, it was welding smooth and like butter. Even though there, I was welding straight through paint, galvanized, whatever, man. It was laying down some nice beads and having that flux core really helped with all this dirty stuff that we're using. And the greatest thing about this whole thing is all this stuff was just laying around the shop and basically was, you know, pretty much free. So I'm gonna take a break, my dinner just arrived, and then uh, I'm gonna finish this up. Probably got about 30 more minutes worth of welding, dialing this thing in. We're gonna clean it up and paint it. Okay, there we have it. All the welding and fabricating is done. Now, I went through and ground down most of the things. I ground down all the uh, bars for the... Steve's gonna get the uh, wire wheel out and just clean up some of this paint and whatever else he sees that I might have missed. And then we're gonna give it a coat of paint. I basically just built this kinda on a whim with stuff I had laying around. There was no plans. I kind of planned it as I was building it, but overall, I think we did a great job with scrounging up all the stuff we found in the shop. All this stuff, the blue and the tan stuff, that is actually like the support beams like this from a bunch of shelving that I had cut up and repurposed into other things. Pretty much everything here, metal-wise, was free or recovered from scrap for next to nothing. I did have to buy $26 worth of welding wire, which I blew through in half a day. So we probably, shit, we probably put $100 worth of welding wire on this thing, right? Yeah, a lot of tedious things. I didn't have all the bars. 
So a lot of those bars down there are actually butt welded together. Literally all the little ends there. We didn't have enough strap. We just kind of found things as we uh, went along and uh, kind of just threw this thing together. That bigger welder, I was having some real issues dialing it in. As you can see over here, uh, this is some of the most horrible welding I've ever done. I was having a hard time dialing it down to that thin stuff. That big welder didn't want to do it. It just kept burning holes. I had to really mess with it. These things are on here. There is gaps and whatnot, but it does. it is gonna look better with these caps on there, even if they aren't welded all the way around. Definitely wish I would have had some more of that uh, flux core, but that other welder did a great job. This right here is the only thing that really bothers me is this back piece is kind of crooked. But nobody will ever see that, except for me and Steve. And that'll bother me for the rest of my life. <laughs> Okay, there you have it. Three days, tons of welding wire, bunch of scrap, and 12 cans of paint later. And we have an amazing rack where we can put all of our stock. Now, how I did this, I painted the bottom first black, and then I let it tack up, didn't even let it dry all the way, and I put some trash bags under there and then i just came back and painted all the orange i put two i put one like light, light coat and then i came back with kind of a heavy second coat but overall i think this came out absolutely awesome and this is going to make my life a lot easier and make the shop look a whole lot nicer and that's what it's going to look like with the safety bars in there I, just, I left them kind of chrome looking because they look nice. So let me know what you guys think. If you would have done anything different or if uh, you have any ideas what I can add to this. Or just let me know what you think. So that's it for now. It's like 5 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I actually got to go leave for Tampa in three hours. <laughs> so we're going to get this all cleaned up in here. And get ready to start scrapping. Let this thing dry. And uh, we'll start filling it up with stock. So if you come this far, thanks for watching. Stay tuned because uh, we're going to continue cleaning up the shop and making cool things out of scrap.
I'll tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard. See, I've been using the fillet knife and cutting down one side. Now this stuff, once you have it like freed, it comes right off. Or at least the ones I was doing. <laughs> because they're like impossible. So Basically, once I get it to this part, I cut one of these up the side and like free the corner here. So basically what I was doing is coming in here and just making a cut like that, right? And then once it gets loose, it'll really just kind of come right out of there. It is tedious, but if you make the cuts in the right spot, it actually comes off pretty easy. 